saith the Lord. Uh, yea, in my hands are healing signs, wonders, and miracles. Uh, and yea, I stand abundantly ready to make provisions for thee this day, saith the Lord. Uh, yea, let thy countenance be glad and let thy heart rejoice. Uh, for I, the Lord thy God, in the midst of thee this day will truly work by my anointing and my power. Uh, yea, I will give unto thee. Yea, I will bless thee. Uh, yea, I will keep thee and sustain thee. Yea, I will strengthen thee. And yea, I will uphold thee this day, saith the Lord. Uh, yea, I'm putting firm footing uh, beneath thy feet this day. Uh, and I'm increasing thy faith. Uh, and yea, glory and honor I'm setting uh, upon thy head. Uh, for yea, I'm raising up in this hour an army of people uh, that shall go forth in my name uh, and shall know their God uh, and shall do exploits, saith the Lord thy God. Uh, behold, I'm this day commissioning uh, that people uh, to rise up in my name and to go forth in my power for this is the day of battle in the kingdom of God and a day of great victory and a day of winning and a day of triumph saith the Lord thy God for thou shalt surely put thy head upon the neck of all mine enemies and shall shout with a voice of victory and a voice of triumph so lift up your hearts O Zion and sing a new song unto me for I the Lord am mighty to deliver thee saith thy God oh hallelujah raise your hand and give him the glory oh hallelujah glory to God glory to God glory to God, glory to God. oh hallelujah oh my God hallelujah both hands are outstretched. Both hands are outstretched. Both hands are outstretched. I saw that in the spirit the whole time we were singing this morning. Not one hand, not a hand, 
But the Lord would say both hands. Both hands. God is going to push one one way. And he's going to push one the other way. And he's going to clear a path for victory. Thus saith the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see the Lord putting up the hand on this wall and the hand on that wall. And the Lord said, watch me while I push it back off of thee. Hey, Honda my Shanda Mahatalabahaya. Watch me. The Lord is saying, I know you've been feeling shut in and closed in. This is the day for the removal of that closing in. God is saying this day, I'm pushing back the walls. I'm making room. Hallelujah. I'm clearing. I'm broadening. I'm widening. I'm making space around thee, saith the Lord thy God. You shall no longer feel hemmed in. You shall no longer feel shut out or shut off. But the Lord said, an abundant entrance is being made unto you this day, saith the Lord. A door effectual. Hey, come I shun to my higher. A door effectual is being opened unto thee. Hallelujah. 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 You shall not go up before and run back without the answer. But the Lord says, this time you shall surely go in and you shall come back forth with the answer. Yea, saith the Lord, I shall begin to answer thee speedily, says the Lord. Yea, even while you are yet calling unto me, I will be moving on your behalf. Hallelujah. The Lord would say to break out of the mold of waiting and having to wait. Break out of the mold of just being carried from day to day. Break out of that mold, says the Lord, because a new day is dawning upon thee in this hour, saith God. And thou shalt surely see prominent answers. Prominent answers. Glory to God. Answers that will have a huge change effect, saith the Lord. Yea, it will not just be little tidbits and parts and pieces. But I say unto thee, I shall begin to reveal the whole picture. And you shall not just look at this and have to guess and wonder until the next part shows up. But I shall begin to let you look in on the whole. And yea, you shall see the whole. And when you see the whole, these little tripe things that have tried to get around your feet will mean nothing to you anymore, saith God. For you shall see that my whole plan and my whole purpose cannot fail. Glory. Let me tell you what I just seen in the spirit. I seen like when you when you look in a in a at a on a people gonna have a dinner and you see one standing over here and one over here and one back over yonder and you look and you get bits and pieces. You see a piece of the room here and a piece of the room there. But I saw the Lord just take his people up in the spirit just like they were standing on a balcony. And the Lord said, now look and behold. And when they looked down, when they saw the whole picture, I hear God say, you're getting ready to stand in a higher place in the Spirit and you're going to see the whole picture. How come I summed out of my And I want to tell you what you're going to see. You're going to see people who play a role in this thing. And some of them people you see it is going to blow your mind because you hadn't expected to see them no more. But the Holy Ghost says you're going to be surprised when you look in on what I'm doing because the Lord would say I'm weaving a purpose together and it's forming a whole picture, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I mean, you're going to look into it and say, my God, where did he come from? Where did she come from? Where did they come from? People you've not seen in years, but they're going to be a part of the plan. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of it's people you've already given up on. But they're going to be sitting there in the midst of the in the midst of the banquet. Hallelujah. And you're going to say, where did they come from? They're part of the plan. They're part of the purpose. And God don't change his mind. Hello. The Lord is in one mind. And you can't turn him. And the Lord says, I've not turned from my purpose. And I've not turned from my plan. Can you say amen? 
And so some of this stuff right now, you can't figure it out, and that's because you can't see where it's going to fit in. But the Lord says, I'm getting you to a place you're going to see. You're going to see where it fits in. Hallelujah. And I can tell you now, some of you are getting ready to see restoration in your homes and in your families. I'm talking about a joy that ain't been there in years. It's getting ready. There's a closeness getting ready to come back into the home and into the family. And I'll have you to know it's going to extend right into the church. And there's going to be a unity. People that had that's been on house are going to get back on ends. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's going to be a coming together in the body of Christ. When I was praying last night before I went to bed, the Holy Ghost began to pray through me and began to say through me over and over again, call forth an assembly. Call forth an assembly. Call forth a gathering. Uh, call forth a host. Somebody about Calabo Hoshan Alamahaya. Amen. Oh, let me tell you something, folks. You're getting ready to see a host. A host of what God is going to do. A whole host. A whole host. And that's why it's vital that you and I understand that it is key role playing right now. Just as much with people who are stepping over to the other side. Amen. People in our own saints where prominent preachers, pastors, missionaries right now in the last two weeks have stepped over into the glory world because both sides play detailed parts in the coming forth of this plan of God. Hallelujah. The whole family in heaven and earth, the Lord of hosts is coming up on the rising and blessed be God, there's going to be a whole host of things that are going to unfold. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you right now that you're just going to have to to, 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 to reconcile the fact that before you got time to figure it out, the Holy Ghost already had it worked out. Can you say praise the Lord? I mean, you're going to go into some things that got you all knotted up and all burdened up about, and by the time you get there, the Lord will have already sent His angel into that and worked it in your behalf and in your favor. Come on now, somebody. Some of you right now are going to receive such a change in reports in your bodies and in your health because you've received one report, but you're getting ready to see the Lord of hosts get in the middle and before you even get to where you're going, the angel of healing will have already went before you. Amen. Why? Because we're seeing a great work and a great moving. Amen. So get it in your head. These are times. There ain't no time for, for us to have. Oh, this is the Spirit's way. The Holy Ghost way. That's why every one of these services have got to be run that way by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And if the Holy Ghost runs that way, then we've got it all figured out and, and the Holy Ghost is leading the way and showing the way and revealing the way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> saith the Lord. Let every, every word that I give thee jump upon it. Uh, stand upon it. Uh, 
build upon it, saith the Lord, for they are stepping stones, and they are building blocks, and they are support beams to the great plan that I am revealing in this hour. Yea, hear the word, but respond to the word. Hear the word, but believe the word. Hear the word, but stand on the word. And be ye not hearers only, but be ye doers of the word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Because it won't do no good to hear it if you don't stand on it. And believe it. Can you say amen? I've seen folks get here word you be seated I've seen folk get word and then get up like they just put it in their little satchel and they go home bring that satchel back into the next time for another word well that ain't gonna cut it we gonna hear it we gonna act on it we're gonna obey it and God's gonna move amen hallelujah you all just continue to pray for sister Gladys for that back I laid hands on her and prayed when I got in this morning and uh, okay so just believe the Lord she get all the way well. Amen. I believe she'll do good. And I believe in a matter of uh, just a little bit of time it's going to loosen all the way and she'll be back to her normal self. Amen. We got her down here anyway where we can keep laying hands on her and praying the prayer of faith. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Go ahead and turn to Zechariah 4. This morning I'm going to talk to you about the destined purpose of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I also heard the Lord saying this morning that he's showing you a great mystery. That you'll be like Samson. You'll think you're just seeing the dead carcass of the lion. But when you look on the inside, there's honey. And it's taking the honey, the sweetness of the Lord, of abundance, of healing, of grace, of favor upon your life. Don't see death and desolation in small things. For the Lord is the God of the big things. That's what he has destined for you, you know, in the old wicked way of thinking, in the Pentecostal way of thinking, you know, it was always be so meek, so poor, as they say, poor as church mice. But that is not what the Lord has destined us for to be. We're not one that's trying to just become the smallest little thing. The Lord has great things for this place, this physical church, and for you, the church as the body. He has great things planned for you. And I'm going to start in verse 6. And it said, Then he said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. And he said, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring you forward. The top stone and the shouts of grace, grace to it. And then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For whoever has despised the day of small things shall rejoice. And shall see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The destined purpose of God on this earth is solely to restore the kingdom of God on this earth. As time resides, more of his throne is ever present. Our destined purpose on this earth is to fulfill his kingdom. And to be his perfected bride, his body, his church, his Christ. No matter if you decided this day to get up and to leave, even this earth, 
where you presently are, where the place you presently are, the purpose of God will be fulfilled in your life. Hallelujah. Some of us choose to go the long way about things because we doubt in our heart. But it's time for us to stop going down the rabbit trails and instead despise the day of small things and see the day of great things at hand in our life. And the way to do that, I was uh, listening to one of my friends, he's a pastor at a church, and he shared a video that he was preaching on. And he said there's so many, he's noticed that so many people in his congregation that they want to do great things for God and they know the purpose of God for their life, but yet they fear. And he said the answer to that is so simple. And he quoted a verse from Psalms that said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and removed all of my fears. It's time in this day that fear is just false evidence appearing real. There's those imaginations of the carnal mind that's set up in our mind. But it says that our mind is renewed daily and that we have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. You can't change the Lord's mind about you. You are forever unto Him. You are forever the apple of His eye. You are forever in His purpose. He's already made his mind up about it. It's never, ever going to change. Hallelujah. Because you're his love. As it's been said, he's infatuated with you. Hallelujah. And he will forever be that way about you. You can't get his hand off your life. For you are his creation. And as we continue to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and seek Him in intimacy, more of His glory, and more of His revelation is bestowed upon us. Hallelujah. For you see, favor overtakes you. Healing becomes a part of you. And it overtakes the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I was reading the other day about the woman of the issue of blood. And... It was said in that word that she had spent much money on physicians. She had tried her way, man's way, to try to solve the problem of the issue of blood. But the issue of blood was that she needed the blood of Christ to cover it. So she said to herself, if I can just get through that crowd and I can just touch that garment. And you see on the bottom of his garment there was the fringe that they wore back then. And in the fringe, they were healing scriptures. So when she was grabbing a hold of the end of that garment, she was grabbing a hold of healing. And she was grabbing a hold of wholeness. She was grabbing a hold of her bloodline so that her issue of blood would stop and his issue of blood would come upon her. And it said that when she touched it, that virtue went out of him. And that was what Pastor many times tells about the dunamis power came out of him and came upon her and made her whole. And it was more, over and over we've heard it, it's more than just healing that came upon her body. Because it says she spent much money on physicians. So it was her finances that were healed. It said that she had great stress from that condition. It was peace that came to her mind. Isaiah 26, 3 says, He shall remain in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. And I know it's so easy. I've been there before. It's so easy to listen to those thoughts, to listen to those worries and doubt. But it's time to stop seeing us in a realm of, oh, that's too great for the Lord, or that's too impossible for this time. No, the Lord, there's nothing Nothing impossible for him. For those that love him. And he loves you. So you might as well just love him. And trust in him. And rely upon him. Because that's his job. As our father. Hallelujah. There's been so many things. That I realized. That this year. Even mom has said in my job. That I know. That I have finally come. Into the place. The destined purpose. It was prophesied for me. Because I know the Lord, He gave me the word before it ever happened. He said, Megan, you're going to go into get new faces, new places, and new spaces. And it even, I didn't realize it was going to apply to my job. I thought it just, 
in the family. It's applied in the family as well, but it's applied in the job. And there's over and over, there's people, there is, the other day we have a, a, a lady that she's a volunteer sub and she's a retired teacher. And I don't know her very well. I've only seen her when she's doing duty. And she got placed in my classroom because there was a change of plan. And she said, Miss Worcester, you got to come here. And I said, what is it? And she said, I've only sat in your classroom for about 20 to 30 minutes. But I've just never seen anything like that. The way you teach and the way you interact with these kids and the way you just get them to learn. Because I know these kids. I've seen them for years. And they're little stinkers. But you're getting them to learn. And they're loving learning. And I just want to tell you that you're awesome. But that's what the Lord says about to you. That you're awesome. You're my creation. You're mine. And it don't matter what the naysayers say about you. They can scoff you. They can make fun of you. They can laugh in your face when you tell them how great your God is. But the thing is, God is greater. And it's going to overtake the whole situation. You've been placed. Some of you wonder, why have I been put at this place? And it's because you're in there to change the atmosphere. You know, we have, it's been, you know, people know that about us. We got a big family. And when we go somewhere and we visit, I actually overheard somebody say, my God, that family just overtook this place. Let's get out of here. But that's what it is. That the family of God, because of the power that is within us, we just overtake it. We change it. We change all issues of darkness and doubt. And we put them in the marvelous light of the Lord. And we let the mysteries be revealed. And we let the veils come off. And the scales come off of our eyes so that we can see what the destined purpose of the Lord is. Hallelujah. This this many times, there are certain denominations that they'll try to say that the earth belongs to the carnal man. They'll say it's the devil. Well, that is the carnal man. It's the evil mind of the Lord. And they'll say that it is it. But it says in the word that the earth is the Lord's. And this earth is not going to go away. It's just going to be ever presently changed by the glory of God in our lives. Hallelujah. I'm believing for that. You see, we've been the remnant for many years. But there's been more and more. The more I keep seeing people post little blurbs here and there, I'm like, oh, they're starting to get on the kingdom. They're starting to realize what the kingdom of God is in their life. They're starting to realize what the message of grace does. That we are a king and priest unto God forever after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek was the one that met Abraham. He showed that he the man that he was not just a father, but he was the father of all creation. I was teaching on that with the kids in the children's church. And I remember April and Dwayne's little boy, Gabriel. It was just like, God's just amazing. He was mad. They were like 90 and 100 and having a kid. He's like, that's, that's not known. That's unheard of. That's impossible. But the Lord did it. And then he was even more amazed by the name Isaac, where we talked about Sarah laughed in the tent when she received the revelation in her spirit that she was going to have that child. And even though it was a long wait, it could have been a lot quicker. Because you see, they tried to take it in their own hands when they got Hagar to have Ishmael. And it could have come, the answer could have come quicker by faith. But you know what? Isaac came in a distant, destined purpose. And his name meant laughter. Because he put, put joy into your life. And if you'll embrace this kingdom of the Lord and this grace of the Lord and this favor of the Lord, it says that you'll have joy more abundantly. Joy will overtake you. You'll find yourself a happy person. One of my students the other day, my last but I call him my Eeyore because he's kind of like, why bother? A lot of times when he comes in, and it was last week, he said, Miss Forster, you're just the happiest teacher I've ever met. He goes, you make me happy some days, which is hard to do because nobody can make me happy. I said, well, it's how you look at life. And so I started to see him smile a little more. And I'm believing that he's going to have a joy for learning. And the Lord's going to overtake his mind. Because you see, that's why I've been put there in that classroom. To change those minds of those kids that said that they wouldn't amount to anything. And it changed their destined purpose for their lives. That's why we're, we're placed at certain jobs. And we're placed at certain places. 
And we're placed here and asked to do this and asked to do that because it's meant to share the kingdom of God. That is our whole concept of the kingdom of God is that we're a body. We're a congregation together. Whenever I hear someone say, I believe in God and I, I read my word, but I don't believe in going to church. I'm like, uh-oh, red flag. They didn't get that revelation. Because in the body, that's where we learn and we get deeper revelation. And even when you think that you're all by yourself, because I know like when I was at college, the Lord was revealing revelation as a revelation of who he truly was and was changing my old mindset into the not new mindset of God. Here I was thinking I was all by myself getting this revelation. And I'm thinking, oh Lord, I, I know who the kingdom of God is. I know that we're kings and priests. I know that we're destined for more than just what we were in. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to have to leave my church. because They're going to be in that old revelation. Not get it. And the whole time that I was getting new revelation, y'all were getting new revelation. Because we decided to seek the full purpose of God. He had it destined upon us. It's his great commission that we shall do more. We shall perform more miracles than Jesus Christ ever performed on this earth. And it says in the word that there were so many miracles that it was too many to even write down in the word of God. And that's what it is. When we abide in his purpose, we abide in his plan, and we just go with the flow, he'll change the whole thing. Hallelujah. And, I, and you can't regret your small beginnings. Hallelujah. Because it, he's built that foundation upon us. So I heard my cousin Katie say in that conference, without the Old Testament, we wouldn't have the New Testament. And the Lord, some people are like, why did the Lord allow Adam to fall? Because he had a whole destiny that it wasn't just man's thought that brought about the change, but it was God in Christ. He had the whole setup. He had the whole plan planned out. Where Jesus would come upon and it would get rid of the old law. Hallelujah. Of Moses. Hallelujah. And with this mindset where you're talking about healing overtakes us. It causes us when we have the mind of Christ. The Lord said it causes us to have the DNA of heaven. And DNA stands for the divine nature ascended unto heaven because you see when we allow ourselves to identify with his dna his divine nature ascended that's what we do we ascend as smith wiggleworth said there is no way to ever have enough of god you always will keep going higher and higher and higher just like with natural jobs when you allow yourselves to embrace new skills. They'll, your boss will come to you and say, you've outgrown that position. We gotta get you another one. There's one lady, she had been uh, praying about her job. I, I saw that on ministry. And she'd been praying out about her job and she overqualified for her job, but because she didn't have a college degree, they wouldn't put her in a higher position. So she just called that ministry and said, I need you to agree in prayer because I really need a promotion with what's going on. I, I, I need more finances to help my family. And then it wasn't but two weeks later, she called back in and said, they had to create a position for me because it said that you had to have a college degree to have that position. But my skills exceeded those of the college trade that they created just a position just specially for me. And they said, as long as I was in there and it gave her extra money and bonus more pay than what she even thought it was going to be. Because she listened to the purpose of God and she allowed herself to be sharpened and to be trained. There are still, it's so sad, but there are Christians to this day that they're still on the milk of the world. They want to be babied by their pastor. They don't want to get any new revelation. They want to be right at that beginning of salvation. But there is more than just the salvation message. There is more. There is an identity that causes us to become more than conquerors. We download it into our mindset. 
Hallelujah. We are kings and priests. And favor and grace rise up within us to take our place, seated rightly in the throne of heaven forever. Again, forever after the order of Melchizedek, who is our Prince of Peace, Jesus the Christ, forever reigning in us because of his destined purpose. I'm going to read a little bit of Michelle O'Donnell's last book, How Then Shall I Live. And she's talking about the priest's nature. And it says, The consciousness of the priest must be about honoring the truth of God. Not giving power to anything that is exalting itself before the majesty of his holy being. He must be free to be exalted into that holy state of one who is once again about to perform a miracle. He is about to remove every sin or covering that has attached itself to the holy son of God that is concealing his true identity. This is true forgiveness. The word forgiveness actually means to send away, to remove. By doing so, he is allowing that person to enter into that sacred place of the experience of oneness, where they and their God become one in the same being, the greater swallowing up the lesser. It was from this place that Jesus lived his life. It was from this place that he spoke such words of eternal wisdom. And it was from this place he healed and worked his miracles. This is the place that we must enter, where greater things than these shall you do also. This is where we become one with and as the only begotten Son. But here we must be cautioned. We can never accomplish this until our own consciousness is free of any judgment of the offense or fear of the disease. We cannot carry anything of a mortal nature with us into that place. If we find a block within as we approach this, we must pause and ask and realize what thoughts we ourselves are holding there. We must repent if we are giving power to the problem by acknowledging it as power. We must allow the spirit to move across our souls and sweep away whatever we are holding on to. We may not know what it is, but the spirit does and it must go. The spirit is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intense motives of the heart. I often say that the far majority of this work is this phase within my soul. Once this is done, the remaining treatment is simple. Whatever it is that you see that needs to be a change in your life. It's that simple. By allowing ourselves that nothing else is more greater than the power of the Lord Jesus Christ himself that works within us. Hallelujah. For we are far more greater than often what we realize. Hallelujah. I'm going to read verses 8 through 12 from Zechariah 2. And it says, For thus... He said, the Lord of hosts, after his glory, sent me to the nations who plundered you. For he who touches, you touches the apple of his eye. Behold, I will shake my hand over them, and they shall become plunder for those who serve them. And then you shall know the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. By that song that we sing, hallelujah. For behold, I come. And I will dwell in the midst, declares the Lord. And many nations shall join themselves to the Lord in that day and shall be my people. And I will dwell in your midst and you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. And the Lord will inherit Judah as his portion in the Holy Land and will again, again choose Jerusalem. And in case you don't know what Judah means, where it says, send Judah first, Judah means praise, means worship. Hallelujah. And as we know, Ruth Ward Heflin said that praise, when we praise, it turns into worship. And when we worship, it turns into the glory of the Lord. And when we glory in the Lord and allow the midst of heaven to reside within us, that's where the revelation of the Spirit comes upon us. 
that we could just be sitting there and we've read one scripture we've probably read it a hundred thousand times and then one day the breath of his spirit just breathes on it and revelation comes in within you and you just get up and you shout and you rejoice for the lord to show you those things anytime that you know my aunt barbara she kept a blessing she keeps a blessing journal every year and what sometimes she said when she starts to feel situations of doubt she just gets out that journal and she reads where the Lord did this and the Lord did that and the Lord did this and the Lord did that and it's not very long hence that the answer comes because you see the Lord's word will not fail I've done what pastors done before that sometimes when those thoughts of doubt come against you sometimes you physically have to put the Bible there and stand on the word of God and say your word is true your word shall not be void you said in your word Lord and that's where the answer comes it's been said almost 30 years ago oh, actually a little over 30 years ago it's been said mom and I were talking about this it's been prophesied to this church that we should own the whole block and I don't know about you but I've been seeing some for sale signs up and we got to start decreeing that the Lord says sold for your word shall not be void. Whether it's a person that buys it and gives it to the church. Or whether the money comes and the Lord says buy it. Yeah. For he yeah. never wants us to remain small. He's always wanting to stretch forth. It says in Isaiah 54 that it says take up the tent pegs and extend out. Yeah. For, your, for your tents are expanding. That's what the Lord is wanting us to do. It's not just expanding physically. Because there's going to be a whole face lift up this place. But it's expanding in here as well. Where you thought you were just this small little hole there. In your mind. In your spirit. In your soul. But the Lord's expanding you. My papa used to share a story about a boy. And he was in a Sunday school lesson. And they were talking about how big God was. And he said to a Sunday school teacher, he said, if it's like, you say God's a big God. And the Sunday school teacher said, yes. And you said that God's within me. He said, yes. And he said, well, if God's in me and he's such a big God, he's bound to stick out all over. Wow. And that's what it does. The presence of the glory of the Lord, you allow it to rain on you. Even when you physically don't feel the Lord, it still resounds in you. People come and they say, something's different about you. Something's different. There's peace within you. There's joy within you. You just got this abundance. You, you know, as they physically say, they call it lucky. And I say, no, I'm blessed. Because favor's not fair. It overtakes us. It goes before us. The Lord charges his angels to work for us and to go before us and to bring forth the prophecy and the words of change to come up into our lives. Don't expect the small things. No matter what your age is, you might already be retired, but don't see yourself as one that has to be bound to a fixed income. The Lord will give you ideas. The Lord will place great things. He can even, I had a friend, she, her husband was in the military and the military wasn't releasing the money. And she said, Meg, I counted it up. I would look at my bank account every day. And somehow this money would just be there. And I don't even know where it came from. And it would just be there and it would give us enough money for groceries or give us enough money for bills. And I read of another lady that she just went in to check her bank account and she thought it was a mistake. She had $250. And then when she looked at her bank account, she had $250,000. And she thought the bank was just made a clerical error. And the bank checked it and said, no, you had an anonymous deposit show up in your account yesterday. And it brought forth answers. And it brought forth change. And it's not just the physical. It's the uh, the financial realm. It's also the physical. It's also the family. It's been prophesied that our families are going to have joy and they're going to have peace. And I don't care if you had relatives that were already in the body of Christ and they decided they got caught up in the carnal things and they decided to go out. They're like the prodigal son. They're going to come back in and we're not going to judge them, but we're going to embrace them and show the love of the Lord because it says that we are Christ and Christ is divine love. 
So that's all you got to do is let the love just overtake you. Every time you look at him, you just look at him with love. And you smile. And they might look at you weird and be like, why are you smiling at me? And you just say, because I just see you in God. I just see what's going to happen to you. I just see you in Christ. There's great things for you. Sometimes you just got to prophesy a little bit. And the wisdom of the Lord will come upon you and it will plant seeds. It might be just a little touch on the shoulder. It might just be a little prayer under your breath. but Or handing them something. You know, like the lady that she had the sister that had lost her mind. And they went to Shambok. And they said, we want you to pray over this candy. And he said, I don't pray over candy. I'll pray over prayer cloths. And he said, no, no, no. You don't understand the mental asylum, the sanatorium. They know what those are. And before we can get it to her, they throw it away. But they let us give her as much candy as she wants. So he was like, well, this is an odd request, but I'll do it. And every time he felt the power of God upon him, he'd reach in his pocket and he'd grab a hold of that candy. And he'd just say, the power that's within me will go on that candy and I'll go on that girl. And it was a couple months later, he saw that lady again. And she had this beautiful young lady sitting beside her. And she said, hey, this is my sister. Once you meet my sister. So he didn't think anything of it because it had been a few months. And she's like, this is my sister. He's like, okay, maybe they really want me to shake their hand really good. So he came and shook her hand. And she's like, and he started walking away. And she's like, no, this is my sister. She's the one that ate the candy. And he said, oh, wait, wait a second. What do you mean? She, what happened? And he said, she ate the candy. And it wasn't but two days later, she came into her right mind. And she knew who she was. And she knew where she lived. And she kept saying to them, you got to call my sister and get me out of this place. And it wasn't but two days that they called the sister and said, you got to get out of this place. There's nothing wrong with your sister. She can go home. But that's what the Lord does. He takes all of the darkness and all of the doubting. And all those situations that do not line up with his word. And he replaces it with his identity and his destined plan and his destined purpose and his purpose is only for good the lord is only good that's all he can ever be in our lives is nothing but good i think of a story i read of michelle o'donnell and they had her praying over this girl that was in a mental asylum and she could see the girl and she was inside of a drum and she was beaten to get out so she just sat there and she prayed for her and said, let the real girl come out. And it wasn't long after that, that girl, she awoke in her right mind. That's what the Lord does. He allows us to be a spoken place of peace. Even Blessed Assurance Temple itself. We are a destined plan of God. We're a destined place to have peace, to have abundance, to have healing, to have His grace. And to have his favor upon our lives. For I say to you that you are abundant. And I say to you that you are blessed. And I say to you that you are whole. I say to you that you are mine. And I say to you fret nothing. And only keep your focus on me. And all things shall flow in the river of my glory. And come into full fruition. Says the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 For the Lord would say in the days to come as you just walk upon this earth doing my will and doing my word. Ye shall feel blasts of my glory and blazes of my fire. Yea, there shall be combustions that just come upon thee and within thy spirit. Yea, even spirits of prayer and intercession that shall overtake thee and shall almost throw thee to thy knees. And yea, in these moments uh, thou shalt ask and demand and decree and I shall bring forth instantaneous uh, 
results, saith the Lord. These are days of a showing forth and a mighty display of my glory and of my power. And ye shall be at times totally overcome and overwrought with the weightiness of my presence. And with my anointing shall ye be in flames, says the Lord. You shall burn like a fire that is raging. Yea, the smoke of my presence shall ascend out of thee and upon others around thee and thou shalt become a display of my glory says the Lord yea ye shall not be allowed to remain silent because the signs and the wonders that shall accompany thy life shall speak for thee and in thy behalf and thou shalt know what it truly is to have and to be a testimony says the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
we just stepped into we just phased into another dimension you'd have to be on the platform to feel that you could for about 10 minutes there if I'd have turned loose of this pulpit I'd have been the one in the floor hallelujah mother didn't stay up she went over but there was a dimensional overlap I felt a wave override another wave I felt a dimension just slip right up on you know, we think of dimensions is like mountain climbing sometimes. We've got to jump way up here. Jump. Now, when you're walking already in the Spirit, it's not a matter of climbing and jumping. It's a matter of just the glory comes sweeping up and you get washed right on into another place in the Lord. And that just happened. Hallelujah. We literally, the wave of God's presence just swept in here and hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord oh rabba sharaba kalamanda rabba rabba sata ye le 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 mahaya what did the lord tell peter when you get mature enough when you get old enough, when you get grown up enough, you're not going to have to do a thing but stretch out your arms and another is going to clothe thee. You're not even going to have to go where you want to go because another is going to lead thee. Can you say praise the Lord? So my God, I tell you, we believe in dimensions of glory. We believe in dimensions of His presence. We don't believe that there's a spot where it just ends and then it is no more. We believe in the fullness of the divine manifesting and operating in our midst. Can you say amen? And I just tell you right now, you can't hardly keep schedule when you... When it's like that, you just have to just let the thing have its way. It's the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. Can you say praise the Lord? And you could actually feel that like a garment just slipping up on you. You could feel yourself just being just being pushed over the Lord just saying, Go ahead. Go ahead on in. Go ahead on. Walk on into it because this is it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know how we are. You know, that first swim after the winter, you you run up a lot of times before you ever jump in because you're afraid it'll be cold. But Brother Hall used to tell us about how you always have a good friend that'll run along when you stop and just push your little bit and you'll go right on into it. How many want the Holy Ghost? How many give the Holy Ghost permission to just push you on into it? this morning, hallelujah, that just lets you be overtaken. Amen. 
and overcome by the presence and the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, raise your hands and worship Him this morning. Amen. Enter on in deeper to the presence.